In part one, we will analyze how aggregate demand and supply change as we move from the short run to the long run. We'll apply this model to cost push inflation, demand pull inflation, and economic growth. In part two, the Phillips curve is introduced along with the impact of taxes and aggregate supply and taxes and economic growth. Moving from short-run aggregate supply to a long-run aggregate supply model is a key analytical tool in understanding how the economy adjusts to economic shocks, as well as to monetary and fiscal policy. While in the short-run, input prices tend to be inflexible, meaning they can't be changed easily. In the long-run, all prices are fully flexible. Making the transition from short-run to long-run will provide much insight into that process. In short-run aggregate supply analysis, it's necessary to make three assumptions. One, the initial price level is P1. Two, firms and workers have established nominal wages on the expectation that this price level will exist. And three, the price level is flexible both upward and downward. In this model, the economy will be operating at full employment output. If prices increase, because nominal wages and other input prices are fixed, firms receive more profits, which will lead them to increase output, which will move the economy beyond full employment, which will then reduce the unemployment rate below its natural level. If prices fall, the opposite effect would occur. These movements occur along the short-run aggregate supply line. In the long run, nominal wages can adjust in response to changes in the price level. In that situation, an increase in prices leads to an increase in input prices, which will result in the short-run aggregate supply curve actually shifting upward to a new level. If prices fall, the AS curve shifts downward. These shifts allow us to derive a vertical long-run aggregate supply curve located at the full employment output level. Here we see the movement along the short-run aggregate supply curve in the first graph as prices increase or decrease. In the second graph, we see the short-run aggregate supply curve shift up or down as prices increase or decrease, and the new long-run aggregate supply curve is drawn vertically at the full employment output level, reflecting the new price levels. In the long run, all things move back to equilibrium. Bringing in the aggregate demand curve, we now have a graph with three curves, short-run aggregate supply, long-run aggregate supply, and aggregate demand, which is the same regardless of short-run or long-run. All three intersect at the long-run outcome, which is the nation's natural level of unemployment. In the U.S., that's assumed to be between 4 and 6 percent. This graph demonstrates the effects of demand pull inflation on the model. Demand pull inflation occurs when an increase in aggregate demand pulls up the price level. Since the demand pull inflation causes the aggregate demand curve to shift to the right, it causes the price level to increase, which expands output to a higher level. Since the economy is now producing above the potential output, inputs are in high demand, which in the long run causes their prices to also adjust upwards. This, therefore, causes the short-run aggregate supply curve to shift upwards, moving equilibrium back to the long-run aggregate supply curve. In the short run, demand pull inflation increases both the price level and real output, but in the long run, only the price level will increase, as output will always return to the full employment level. Under cost push inflation, factors have arisen that have increased the cost of production at each level of production, causing the short-run aggregate supply curve to shift upwards and increase the price level. Cost push inflation typically causes inflationary pressures on the economy, and government usually will move to counter the negative effects by using fiscal and monetary policy to increase aggregate demand. This only ends up moving the prices even higher as the economy seeks to return to the natural full employment level of output. If the government does not take action, the economy will eventually return on its own to the natural level, but the process will be painful as widespread business failures, layoffs, and plant closures usually follow the process. So the government ends up between a rock and a hard place. Do nothing and deal with an extended recession, or take action and end up with higher inflation. The most challenging issue to deal with is the effect of recession on the model. 
In a recession, aggregate demand declines and shifts left, which reduces prices. The economy will be producing less, so the demand for inputs will be low. Eventually, nominal wages will drop. Once the wages fall, aggregate supply will decrease, which will decrease prices further. We're back at the long-run equilibrium of full employment, but at a much lower price level. In the real world, inflation is a constant. Things cost more today than 100 years ago, or even 10 years ago. How can the economy still achieve a reasonable rate of growth if this happens? The answer is that the aggregate demand, or the long-run aggregate supply curve, shifts in an ongoing process. Economic growth is illustrated by either an outward shift on the production possibilities curve or a rightward shift in the long-run aggregate supply curve. As the curves shift, they will lead to price increases at a new equilibrium level. Prices very rarely decrease in the long run. Why not? The Federal Reserve will increase the money supply to create these rightward shifts in the aggregate demand curve. The whole key to managing inflation is for the Fed to use monetary policy to shift the aggregate demand curve to the right faster than the supply factors of economic growth shift the long-run aggregate supply curve to the right. An economy can withstand mild inflation as long as it is occurring at a slow pace. It is the sudden shifts in the curve that cause economic chaos.